sure look good on you Tell me where you been Dump your stuff out on the rug How long can you stay? How long you played mandolin? Was Mexico sweet? Things have been real hard round here So, uh, thank you. So we brought um, some of your books um, that you've written, and um, can you just in a few sentences tell us a little bit about them? The first one is called Brilliant, the Evolution of Artificial Light. Right. That's my most recent one, and it um, talks about, I think of it as a long poem about the human journey from darkness to illumination. I re that's what I really thought of it as, as I was writing it. And it started really um, with an awareness of um, farming and rural electrification. And that's where it connects with my earlier books about my family's farm and the history of agriculture. And um, I, had, I got the idea from it from a neighbor who talked about living without electricity. And he said he walked into his boarding school when he went off to the Stockbridge School of Agriculture at UMass and he was flicking the light switch off and on, off and on. And he said, they must have thought I was simple. Hmm. And that, um, and the whole um, meaning of light changed for me when I realized that it could also have this social meaning and these, this metaphor meaning above and beyond its utilitarian purpose. So, so you yourself grew up on a farm? I grew up on a farm. In and what, what state? I grew up in northeastern Massachusetts in the town of Dracut, which isn't far from Beverly. It's so it's about 30 miles uh, west of Beverly. Have you so ever been to Beverly? I, I've driven through it. I've been through Beverly, I'm sure, many times in my life. Yeah. And um, what are you working on now? I'm actually trying to write some essays about silence. Not about silence sort of as a respite from noise so much as the um, meaning of silence and its amplitude, I would say. Yeah. Meaning of silence and its amplitude. Yeah. It's so beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so would you describe yourself as a poet first and foremost? I began as a poet and um, poetry is probably my first love as a writer. So I, I don't think, prose is not poetry. Prose can be poetic, but it's not poetry. There's something else going on in poetry. And um, I would love to get my prose as close to poetry as I can. Um, describe your day in a few words. Um, a typical writing day, perhaps. My writing is actually 
Not consistent. It depends where I am in a project and whether, I mean, cons not consistent in the sense of doing the same thing every day, like getting up and sitting at a desk. If I'm at the beginning of a project, I wander all over the place and I'm reading and jotting down notes and sitting in every room of the house. If I'm at the end of the project, I'm more or less in place at my desk. So it, var it really varies. I think a project always has, like books take four or five years, like maybe some of your projects do. And it has its, the tide comes in, the tide goes out. You know, it has, it has its own time and its own um, requirements and rhythms. So why I'm visiting you today uh, in Brunswick, um, in your house, is to ask you if you would be willing to be a participant in a project that I'm now working on, which brings together the voices uh, of many different poets and writers from across the country, which is called the Beverly Oracle. And it is an oracle that I'm building, which will be both visual as well as literal. Mm -hmm. um, it's visual in that it is a structure built on the Beverly Common mm -hmm. and will be public, uh, open 24 hours a day. Uh, the, the entire quality of the oracle depends on the quality of the answers. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they could never be my answers. They should not be my answers, or they should not also be random answers. They should be answers that are given in a meaningful way mm -hmm. as contributions from people who I admire. So I'm here today to ask you if you would be willing to give us our first answer to the oracle. <laughs> I'd be honored to give you the first answer to the oracle. <laughs> that sounds like... I, I love it. Yes. Thank you. And um, in asking you for this, I want to ask you to imagine uh, that the question to which you're giving an answer has not yet been asked. So uh, you're not answering a specific question you're answering um, no question, right. in fact. <laughs> you're giving me an answer before the question has been asked, and that requires a leap of the imagination. Right. And um, so whatever that means to you as a poet, um, it could be, it could be uh, just a few, a few words, it could also be a full sentence or two or three, yeah. uh, we would be so appreciative to, to receive from you. I'd be happy to try. <laughs> It's a leap of faith to think about, isn't it? <laughs> All right. I'm ready with my answer <laughs> for the oracle, the Beverly Oracle. There we go. There you go, Anna. <laughs> it's been really nice to visit you. Thank you for your time and energy and for your contribution, which we'll cherish. Well, I'm so happy to be part of this. I can't wait to see the um, other hundred writers, <laughs> 99 other poets you have. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> All the best to you and your work. Thank you, Anna. <laughs> Good luck with the project. <laughs> Thank you.